scrolling textures or even just dealing with time in a shader is something that very many shaders make use of and kind of makes some of that magic happen that shader magic that we talk about and while yes you can update the uv in code it's really a lot more performance to do it in the shader itself that also starts getting us set up so we can do more complex things like water shaders fancy vfx or even just this cool fire cape that we're going to make today hey chris here from mom academy here to help you who me yes you make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping you get into shaders and yes it's finally happened. I have opened up Shader Graph, started learning how to make shaders myself, and I thought this was a really good introductory, beginner-friendly one for us to work with. I also recently got a fire cape in old school RuneScape, so I thought that was also a good thing to do. So this one's gonna be a no-code, only in editor, only in Shader Graph, beginner-friendly tutorial on how to make this work. Let's hop into the editor and check it out. In our scene, we can see that I already have this beautiful cape that looks very much like the fire cape from old school RuneScape, but it doesn't move, so it's not as cool. I'm using currently the standard lit shader in URP with this cool lava texture and I have emission turned on. We can turn it off, but it just looks a little bit cooler with the emission since it's supposed to be fire. So we're gonna see how do we create a shader graph to make it where it behaves more like the actual fire cape. So the first thing to do is create a new shader graph, which is right click, create shader graph, URP lit shader graph. We'll call it scrolling UV and you can see that it creates it under shader graphs scrolling UV. That's going to be where we can find it. If we just double click, it'll open up the shader graph window. And if you've never made a shader before to get started up here at the top left, that's where we have inputs. And over here in the middle is what we have as the output. It has some defaults for us. So we don't have to actually specify every single option. And it has base color, normal, metallic, smoothness, emission, and ambient inclusion all already supported. So we can add those if we want to, and we don't lose functionality over what we have on the standard shader. We'll be setting up base color and emission here. You can also do the same concept as what we're doing with base color for each one of these other ones if you want to support more of these options. So first we need a texture, so we can go plus texture 2D. We'll call it base map so we stay consistent with the standard naming that Unity gives us. We'll do the emission later, so let's start with just getting the scrolling texture. So base map, and then we want to know how fast should it scroll, so we can do plus vector 2. We'll call it scroll speed, and let's start there. We drag the base map in, we're going to drag that to an empty nothing and it's going to try to create a node that this will input into. We want it to go into a sample texture 2D. This is how we just render a texture based on that texture 2D. It has the UV as input and we can just grab this RGBA, the output, and drag that to be the base color. The rest of these defaults are okay. If we just saved it and stopped here, we would have a new shader that only allowed us a base map and it would render with the defaults here of half smoothness, no metallic, no emission, ambient inclusion at one, and tangent space normals. Next up, we'll take our scroll speed and we need another element here because we want this to automatically scroll. We don't want to have to write any code and come into the processor to have to manage the scrolling, which we can technically do without a shader. This is just a little bit more performant. If we select nothing and just press space, it gives us this create node. In here, we want to take the time. Over some time on the scroll speed, we're going to want to update the UV. So we can simply multiply the time by the scroll speed but we can't just take this directly into the UV. The output of this multiply is just a vector two. What we need is this tiling and offset. So we're multiplying and we're changing now the offset of that UV over time. Since we're taking tiling and offset here, that's gonna give us what we want for the UV as input over here. We probably also want to be able to control the tiling. So we can apply that to the tiling here so we can control it. Up here at the top right, you can see the defaults here. Most likely we want the default to be 1, 1. For the scroll speed, maybe we want it to scroll down by default. We'll set it at like 0 0.5. If we come back to the top left of the shader graph, we'll click Save Asset. Then we'll select our material that currently just has the standard lit shader for URP, and we'll change it to use this new shader graph's scrolling UV shader. Because we use the same name, Base Map, Unity automatically moves this texture over and retains it for this shader. Look at that, it's scrolling. You might think it's a little bit weird that our scroll speed of 0.5 is coming across 
And that's because our cape has some kind of rotation of y. If we set it to be zero, you'll see why it goes that way. So if I change the x to 0 0.5 and the y to zero, we'll see it's starting to fall down. If we adjust tiling, we make it more or less tiling and it applies properly. But what about emission? It would be cool to have this where it can glow, right? So we need to do something and hit it into this emission. We can do the same process of getting our texture because we might want a different texture. And we usually want to apply some kind of color to it, right? So in the properties, we'll create a new texture 2D, call it emission map, and also a new color that we'll call emissive color. So let's bring in our emission map. Again, have it go to a sample texture 2D. And again, we're going to want this tiling and offset to come to our UV because we want both the emissive and the base map texture to scroll at the same speed. Otherwise, they'll get out of alignment. If we just drag that to the emission, we can't apply the emissive color. So it's only going to emit at the texture, whatever is in there. It would be cool if we could combine these two. I'm going to choose the node multiply, take our color and multiply it by whatever the texture we have. And we'll drag the output of the multiply to the emission. And on our emissive color, I want it to be HDR so we can make it glow more than just white. Now we can see we have a base map, an emissive map, and it's glowing. If we play with the HDR color, we can have it glow or not. And it seems to work pretty well, pretty close at least to what we have with a normal standard shader. We can of course do the similar process with water, for example, to get a very simple looking scrolling water. This is one of the ways that water shaders start is including scrolling UVs. I know the water is pretty ugly. This is only one piece of how you start working on getting a water shader together. There's a vast world of shaders out there. Shader Graph has a ton of different nodes and I've seen a lot of videos. There's even one I saw a while ago that has every single node in Shader Graph explained. Hopefully it's made it so you were a little bit less afraid if you were like me and just never got into it before and you like saw HLSL and you were like, what the heck is this? Hopefully it's made it a little bit more approachable to make your own shaders. If you'd like to see more shader tutorials, go ahead and like and subscribe to let me know that this was a really important video for you. And if you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy or just click the join button right here on YouTube. You can get your name up here on the screen. You get a voice shout out starting with the awesome tier. Speaking of those awesome supporters, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Rulin, Paul Berry, and Ify Obelis. At the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen and Andrew Albright. Thank you all for your support. I'm incredibly grateful.